Hi, this is Dan Kirkbride, the uh, Instructional Technology Specialist with the Coeur School District, and this is uh, another technology tutorial brought to you by the iTech department. Today we're going to talk about working with the new spam filter that we have uh, in place. A couple of things that we're going to uh, talk about with managing your spam filter. One is uh, checking that daily summary for block messages, looking for the important ones, the things that you want to uh, have allowed through and then talk about how to allow those messages from trusted sources, how to you know, take a look and see if those sources are trusted. And then the uh, final step there is uh, checking the junk mail folder uh, to make sure that those messages do in fact land in your inbox. So that's kind of the process that we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. So with our new spam filter, we basically have added another layer of protection to our emails. So now instead of just the junk email box that we had before, we've added that spam filter as a first layer of protection. So when spam emails come to our email address, they're first going to be caught by the spam filter, and that's when we're going to get the summary email of emails that are marked as possible spam. Once we allow those emails through, they're probably going to start coming into our junk mailbox, and then that's when we're going to start uh, needing to make um, exceptions in our email to allow those to go straight to our inbox. So first let's talk about how we can use the daily summary to weed out emails that are and are not spam. Every day we should get a email summary that looks just like this for our account and it's going to show how many emails that our spam filter has marked as spam and we can take a look at this email summary and decide which emails we want to allow through and which emails we don't want to allow through the spam filter. One thing I want to mention here quickly is a good way for you to figure out whether or not an email should or should not be allowed through the filter. So if we go to our district homepage and sign in, go to the staff section, go to the digital citizenship for staff, and under the online security section, scroll about three-quarters of the way down. There's a section on email messages that talks about ways that you can take a look at emails and figure out whether or not they're from trusted sources. So you can use this information in conjunction with your email summary to help decide whether or not you want to allow them through. So as I take a look, I can see this first one here, newsletters at edweek.org is a message that I want to receive. It's part of a news feed that I've subscribed to. So I know that I want to see those Edweek emails come through. So I'm going to click this Always Allow button. When that happens, two things are happening with that email. First, it sends that email to my email address. So it's going to let it get to my email inbox. And secondly, it's adding that email to the allow list so that in the future, any messages that come from new newsletters at edweek.org will be allowed past the spam filter and won't show up in this daily summary ever again. Now it's slightly different from the deliver once button. If there's one in there that I think I might want to have come through but I'm not totally sure. So let's say possibly I want to allow this ed surge, ed surge one come through. I'm going to deliver it once and we'll take a look at the screen that comes up for that. It's only half of the message that we get for the always allow because they're saying, hey, we sent this to your email, but at this point it's not on the allow list, so the next time an email comes from Ed Surge, it's still gonna get blocked by the spam filter and it'll be in my next summary that I take a look at, but this gives me a chance to evaluate it, see if it's something that I actually wanna have allowed through, and maybe next time I'll go over here and click the always allow. The last thing that I need to do now is to go and check my junk mailbox because once I've allowed those through now my junk email filter is going to start looking for those spam messages as well so it's very possible that those messages are going to be marked as junk and go into that junk mailbox. 
So as I switch over here to my Outlook client, I'm going to take a look. Here's my junk email box. And sure enough, that Ed Surge email has been added to my junk email box. So this is another layer of protection, that second layer, where I can look at it and take a quick glance and see if it really is from somebody that I want to have it allowed through. And here's that one from Ed Week. This one, I can look at that email address and I say, yes, this is what I want to see from Ed Week. I'll right click on it and I'm going to go down here and say not junk. What this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, I want to always trust email from that email address. I'll click OK. And now it's going to be delivered to my inbox. And so I've basically made it so that it will skip the spam filter and it will be delivered straight to my inbox the next time I get a message from the email address newsletters at edweek.org. This is going to be the easiest way to use our new spam filter and to start protecting your email and our uh, network as well. If you have any questions or any concerns about this, please go ahead and uh, shoot me an email. My email is dkirkbride at cdaschools.org. You can also reach me at extension 1027 in our phone system. And as well, you can always uh, submit a tech repair if you have any questions or concerns at techrepair at cdaschools.org. Thanks, and have a good day.